It's Madden NFL 24. Coming up, we'll see Kenny Pickett. Solid performance a week ago, throwing for three touchdowns. It's the Steelers and the Commanders, and it's all up next. We are just inside the Beltway, about 10 miles east of the Capitol Dome as we come to you from FedEx Field here in Landover. Today we've got a Week 8 matchup on tap here as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Washington Commanders. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about this Commanders team coming into play here today. They come in playing pretty good football. Winners of four of their last six games. Meanwhile, for the visiting Steelers, they too were winners last time out. So something's got to give here. I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. Lurching closer toward the midway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. And the opening kickoff will not be returned, as that will be a touchback. So here are the Steelers now to take over for the first time. And they'll be let out by their third-year quarterback. And despite the three touchdown passes he threw, there's a lot to work on this week, wasn't there? Oh, ton of interception. Yeah, I mean, when you're going really with almost a one-to-one -one ratio, that's not going to work for you well at all. Not over the long haul. The beauty, though, somehow found a way to win. Yeah, they still got the win last week. Meanwhile, Pickett's throw complete there to Johnson. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Pickett back to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Johnson was the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. You talk about this Washington defense. They're going to need to be strong against the run in this one. And that play right there shows exactly why they're so good against the run. Held the line of scrimmage, held the point of attack, and stuffed him for no gain. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. And that one goes incomplete on the drive. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. He punted five times in the win last week as this one's away. A 46-yard punt, eight yards on the return. And it will be Washington football now with a first and ten. So out comes the Washington offense onto the field. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. And you and I both know that any win is a good win, and that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an Had interception. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. So the completion results there in nine yards, and they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Now Fields going to keep it right left. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Really good effort. He does it himself, picks up 15, also picks up the first down. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 16 carries, 55 yards. Not a horrendous week last week running the ball, but definitely room for improvement for their numbers. No doubt, they made some slight adjustments to how they're going to call plays this week in hopes they can kick those numbers up a notch. From the 50, here's Fields. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Kosicki. Seven yards there and a first down. But from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right. That's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, 
Do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play and just finish them off right now? Because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. Fields. That's complete once again. It's Kosicki. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. That's a gain of 11. Would have been a first down if not for that penalty moments ago. And we're at the 41, second and nine. Now run straight ahead with Warren. Oh, that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. 11 yards there, just like last play. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. And the Steelers are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Oh, that's a beautiful read there by the safety. It's zone coverage, so he's just going to sit back and watch. He knows he can't get beat deep because he has the end line to protect him. So he can react to everything in front of him, and he makes a great break on the football and comes down with the interception. To the air on first down with Pickett. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. And he'll bring it back to about the five-yard line. And, Charles, that's now four interceptions over his last three halves of football because, remember, he threw three picks last week. Starting to wonder if maybe defenses and those coordinators have identified something on tape with what he's doing, maybe a movement, maybe the way he's moving his shoulders. Who knows what it could be? He could have a few tells out there that they're keying in on and allowing defenses to get to the football a little bit faster. People steal signals. Maybe sometimes they can figure out what the quarterback's doing just by his movements. On the give, it's Roy. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back. And he will take it in. Touchdown, Commanders. Jalen Warren, his first rushing touchdown of the year. And the Commanders use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. Each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me... It's time to attack and take some of that momentum back, but make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. The numbers on the ground for Henry last week. 13 carries, 53 yards. There were some signs of life from their ground game last week, but overall, just a so-so performance. Everyone knows they can make a slight improvement how they contribute to this aspect of the offense. Lyman can set their blocks and hold them a little bit longer, and he can be quicker to the hole and hit a lane. If they do that, they should get some better numbers produced this week. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Deron Payne able to record his fifth sack of the season. And that's the first sack of this game, but how about last week? Six sacks, great coverage downfield, which helped that pass rush. They are really working in sync right now. The Steelers send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. 
His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Now a fair catch signaled for and made right about the 43-yard line. So here is Washington now to take over. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Runs through the count. Look at this. Metal on the field. A breakaway. Touchdown, Washington. Jalen Warren, his second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Commanders are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. I know I should keep the focus in the spotlight on the hero that just scored, but tackling's been an issue for this defense all game long. I can't set that aside. We just saw it again here. Missed tackles leads to his long touchdown run. Here's Badgley now to try to add the PAT. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. Well, I'm not sure if they drew that play up to score. But it scored indeed. One play on the ground and into the end zone for six. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. Well, partner, fast forward with me for a second. Remember, next week they have the open week, so they're going to get some extended rest. Does that change how they manage the rest of this one? I think it does a little bit, but not by too much because you're right. You get the extra rest. You get a chance to heal up and kind of, you know, do a little bit of a reset for this team. But it's also seven extra days to think back to the last time you were on the field. So now, a little more importance on what they're getting done because they carry a rhythm for essentially two weeks. Now pick it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now we'll pause for an injury here. That's George Pickens, the receiver who's in some discomfort. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, this defense for the Commanders, they were very solid last week in the victory over Baltimore. And no matter what's done throughout a ball game, it always comes back to blocking and tackling. That's the essence of football. But I think it's hard for people to understand just how difficult it is to tackle, especially open field. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. Oh, that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. The Steelers able to pick up 18 yards there. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. Pick it now from the gun here. And his throw is incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. But it'll be second down. You talk about this Washington defense. They were very solid last week in the victory over Baltimore. And last week in that victory, they were pretty good. Probably a pretty easy film session, I would imagine. And after a performance like that, so many people think you just roll into film, take your popcorn, kick back, and enjoy the show because they played well. I can just tell you from experience, after a win is when coaches come down on you harder because they want to emphasize all the mistakes that happen because you won, you're in a good mood, they want to bring you back to earth. Oftentimes you walk out of there and you ask your teammate, did we win last week? <laughs> so my assumption was wrong. I learned something. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. From the gun, here's Pickett. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Cameron Curl. And the Commanders are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. CD, when he went to throw that, I'm not sure if he just didn't see where the defense was. Or whatever the case, not the throw you're looking for on first and goal. 
Not at all, because, look, let's face it, that close to the goal line, if you throw an interception, it's going to hurt on any down. But really, the only down you can kind of live with is if you do it on fourth down. The first three, if you don't have it wide open, just get rid of it. Make sure they can't get it and live to fight another down. First and goal, and you throw the pick, not good at all. Fourteen nothing the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Second quarter now from our nation's capital, and it's Washington in possession of the football as they've got it second and seven. Now Fields. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Well, we get a stoppage because, as you can see, a member of the commanders in some obvious discomfort. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Here comes third in the length of the football. A handoff for Roy. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On the run, it's Warren. And this is going to be a commander's first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll run it. Warren. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They need to make up some ground in the day. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 32-yard line. Right about 20 yards on the pickup. Well, officially, they'll say it's going to go for 19. They really look comfortable there, scanning the situation, analyzing things, feeling the pressure, and then stepping up right through the middle and sprinting for a first down. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Running left, it's Warren. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now a short one to Gesicki. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. And that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down to pick up a five yards. To throw his fields. Dodson has it. Touchdown, Commanders. A great effort there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Commanders take a three-touchdown lead. Well, I don't think that we're ready yet to say the route is on, but they have certainly looked near flawless here in this first half. And now an extra point away from making it 21-0. Yeah, and your experience led you to say that because we have both seen those 21 to nothing leads come and go in this league. But this one feels pretty darn secure. And here's the other part. Even when people chip away at it, it forces you into being almost perfect on the other side, doesn't it, in order to try and mount a comeback. And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. Now the Steelers getting set and ready for their next possession. And they have the game here followed by the open date on their calendar next weekend. And Charles, this is a crew that you have to think really is relishing the opportunity to be on the couch for a few days. Yeah, they certainly are. But let's face it, partner. They can't get caught looking ahead to that couch time while they're playing this one. They've got to take care of business first. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. And that one to the right side and incomplete. 
Guys, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well, so give some credit to the defense. And the Washington pressure gets to him, and he will go down. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. And this offense continues to shoot themselves in the foot. And here, another sack. All game long, we've seen missed assignments, which have led to turnovers, sacks. This group has not played well at all here in the first half. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Now, fair catch is called for and taken at the, we'll call it the 37-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. Now it's Fields. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Fields, we know he has the good mobility. He flashes it there as he scrambles for the first down. No shortage of impressive moments for him thus far. Now he's halfway to the century mark, and we're still in the first half. There's been no answer for his running ability so far by the defense. I can't wait to see what adjustments they'll have to make during the halftime break. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Fields. Now incomplete out to Dotson. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 25-yard line. 17 yards that time and a Washington first. Let's just call it what it is. This has been a flat-out struggle for this defense all game long. They've really had a hard time slowing them down. And while I'm not big on speeches and guys jumping up and down, they might need their team leader on defense to get in their face right now and light a fire under these guys. They've got to start playing better assignment football and start getting guys on the ground. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Okay, take us to school here, Charles, on a play like that. Pretty successful RPO. What's the quarterback looking at? Basics. He's looking at the defensive end or the outside linebacker. If that player crashes down, to take the running back, quarterback pulls it, runs to the outside end. Some teams, though, will read different players depending on defenses, but basically it's that outside player. Second down, ball on the three, first down marker at the one-yard line. Field's going to hold on to it, and he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down, so let's see what this is about. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement and then when they realize those points aren't going to count? Can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, they certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. Touchdown, Washington. A 14-yard touchdown. And the Commanders are able to add on to their first half lead. Well, it's not too often that you say, hey, this one's going to be over by halftime. And, CD, I know our bosses probably don't want us to say that because they don't want people clicking away. But this one might be over by halftime. And since you've already put your job on the line by actually saying it, I will co-sign and go with you because you're my partner. We don't mean to do it, but this game has been exactly as you've described. I see no hope for them going forward. Extra point by Badgley up and good. And the route is on here in this first half. Following the touchdown, Badgley out there to kick it away. 
Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul-searching now? I would say so. They need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. Pickett looking to throw on second down. Completes it to Austin. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Here's Pickett. And yeah, that is incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand. And that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. This is taken at the 23. It's a 45-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield their job is to go ahead and get low almost get into a ball sometimes stack things up and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole here's fields pressure comes and the Steelers take him down now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts so as they talk it over we step aside now Austin and Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game. And that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. Pick it back to the air on second down. He'll let it fly for Austin. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. It's going to be another frustrating end to a drive here. This offense, they've not been able to get anything going in this first half. And now it's going to be time to gather on the sidelines and try to figure out what's going wrong. Who has an idea? Who has a plan? Time to implement it. And he fields it cleanly. 43 yards on the punt. Seven-yard return. And it will be first and ten as they take over. Now we get another look at Washington on offense. Still more than a minute to go, so you know, there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well, so that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines, hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. Back to throw, Fields. Throwing it to McLaurin's way again, and he's got it. And McLaurin going to pick up a commander's first down as he'll be brought down at the 42-yard line. A final shot before the break, Fields. Looking for Dotson, and he's got him. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. So we've reached halftime here in our nation's capital with the commanders on top. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach.
All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Hi again, everybody. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the league here in the unofficial midway point, week eight of the NFL season. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So Washington in a good spot. They've got the lead. They will get the football as the second half gets underway. And the half will begin with a touchback. Here come the Commanders for the first possession of the third quarter. Well, it's hard to imagine the first half going any better for them, CD, and now here as they begin their first series of the second half. I mean, they score here. This one, it's pretty much out of reach. We honestly might already be at that point, partner, because this team, they were dominant in the first half, continue to be dominant now, and I think they're viewing this as a put-away drive on their way to a lopsided victory. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Fields now to throw. Got his man. It's Warren. Dancing away at the 35. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. It'll go as a pickup of 14 and a Washington first down. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide. And these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And they'll send the tight end in motion here. Now a run with Warren. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Out route looking for McLaurin. He's got him, and he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. A CD, they certainly know the hole that they face as they begin the second half. They have to do what precious few teams have done in NFL history. And that's try to come back from a four-possession deficit. And, partner, you know as that team gathers, they're saying to each other, you never say never, right? Because if you're on an NFL roster, that's how you have to think. You can always come back and win a ball game. And let's face it, we saw a certain Super Bowl, a 25-point lead late that wasn't enough to put someone away. But that being said, this task is near impossible. Let's face it. And bottom line is, it officially becomes impossible if this possession is an empty one. Pick it. He'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. And Fryermuth going to have a Steelers first down as he'll get this up to the 43. Pick it right back to the air again. Complete. It's Johnson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. And that'll be incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. 
Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Back to throw. Pick it. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 32-yard line. Now it appears we have a stealer here slow to get up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Dialing up another pass here, pick it. Again, it's Johnson, and he gets it all the way down inside the 10, and mark him at the five. They'll try and run for it with Henry. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him four on the carry there at second and goal. A four-yard gain brings up second and goal. Henry again. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Derrick Henry taking it in from two yards out. And the Steelers are able to cut into that deficit. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now a 28-7 ball game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. The commander's offense returning to the field. Still operating with a comfortable lead despite the score a moment ago as they begin first and 10. They'll start by running the option to the right and holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped to the backfield. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Now Fields. He finds his man complete. That's Warren. So that'll be no better than an incompletion. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. From the gun, here's Fields. And that will be incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their 36-yard line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Henry up the middle. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Pick it back to throw. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. 
A look at Washington as they come onto the field. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. And this is going to be a commander's first down as he's got this up to about the 34-yard line. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now it's Fields. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. Fast, slow, it doesn't matter. If you give a quarterback enough room to escape, he can hit you for a big gain. You've got to give him a little more focus moving forward. Here's Warren. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Well, number one on the list of things not to do when you're up three scores in the third, that right there, give the football away. I love when you speak like that. You know how doctors talk about taking the Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm? You just did the football Cratic one right there. Don't give the ball away when you have a lead that you can lock this game down with. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The fumble on first down. Now here's second down. Up the middle they go. It's Warren. And he'll get it down to the play to the 37. 137 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. Play action. It's Fields. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Keanu Benton, the one who got in to bury him. At that time, finally, a measure of revenge as they get him down behind the line. It almost felt like relief, didn't it? Because with the success he's had throughout this game, you'd almost expect him to get free and pick up 10 to 15 every time he takes off. Not in that case. That has to feel good for the defense. Well, they can probably live with that with this late lead in the fourth quarter. That's one of the few things that's gone wrong. You're exactly right. This one was well in hand. That kick there was more for cosmetics, you know, to add to their score. Not getting it, that shouldn't harm them at all. Pick it to throw on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Second down, here's Pickett. His throw incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Throwing on third down, here's Pickett. They set up the screen for Henry. And they do get this across midfield of the 49, but a small consolation prize as he's well short of the first. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. 
pick it. Fourth down. Desperation time. Targeting Thomas on the out route. Making the catch. And now this is going to be close. The defense says they stopped him, and they did. So they'll trudge off the field with a bitter taste in their mouths after that failed fourth down conversion. Yeah, there'll be a lot of analysis there on the sidelines. Was it the right call? Was it, the, was it against the right defense? Should they have even gone for it at all? Will that change what they do going forward in this game? A lot of questions to be answered by them. The defense doesn't really care. They're like, <laughs> bring it on again. We'll stop you the next time, too. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. Now second and nine. They'll keep it on the ground. Warren. And some pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. It's a first down for Washington on a pickup of 11. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Warren will try the right side. And a strong run there as he'll maneuver his way down inside the 15. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. The medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. On first down, it's Warren. And a good physical run that time. He's going to wind up gaining five on that one. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Third and two, Fields. Touchdown, Washington. Jahan Dotson with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Commanders up the lead to four scores now here in this fourth quarter. So still throwing here in the fourth quarter with a pretty sizable lead, and now that lead even more sizable. And if nothing else here, CD, a chance to pile on some stats before this one wraps up, and he did just that. Brandon Convention tells us it's time for them to get off the gas a little bit, right? But you and I both know the receivers don't want them to because, as you noted, this is their chance to pile on the stats. If they got their way, they try to get every single spot in the depth chart points before this game is over. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And just looking ahead, it would appear that that bye week is coming at the right time. They'll have two weeks to chew on this one, though probably not one that they want to chew on. A poor performance from start to finish. Pickett's throw complete to Fryer Muth. So the completion good for six yards. And that will bring up second down. Looking to throw, pick it. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing. And they shut that one down with little gain. Trying with Pickett here on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. Pickett now on first down. Open man, that's Henry. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free, and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively, or it could have gone for more. He's got Derrick Henry again, back-to-back -back catches. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. 
Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Now pick it. A short one there to Fryermuth. Short completion, just four yards, and that's going to bring up second down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Johnson's got it complete. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> and he's going to pull his way forward to the 48. Here's second and three. They run the counter. Warren. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down. First and ten at the 48-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Warren. And he'll take this for a short gain on what will prove to be the final play of this ball game. So a victory here for the Commanders. And it was their defense that really paved the way to this victory as they allowed the one touchdown, and that was all she wrote. Almost want to do the defense chant right now, right? Defense with a couple of claps in there, but no one wants to hear that from me. Let's just talk about how they got it done, though. When you take care of every aspect of the game, shut down the run, control the airways, right? Make sure the quarterback is harassed. This type of performance you get. They can't fashion together any offense, no consistency, and they just took control. So for Washington, they improved to 5-3 and three as they approach the halfway point of this 17-game schedule. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the Philadelphia Eagles. Meanwhile, for the Steelers, they fall two games under 500 now at 3-5. and five. And they'll take this loss into the bye as they'll be back in action in Week 10. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.